of your lesson today is taken from the 11th chapter of Genesis, the first nine verses. But in order to understand what this is all about, let's back up a bit to a reading, get a feel for what they're trying to say. You remember Noah, the flood. Noah had three sons. Now, they have received the same tremendous spiritual power that Adam and Eve received from God. It came down through to them. And so you had Noah and his three sons, very powerful individuals, as long as they wore the spiritual garments that God had given them. The three sons were Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. Now, Ham, I should say, Shem followed his father's footsteps. He really held on to that faith. Ham was a little bit different. He not only left his family uh, traditions, he went out into other areas. He found those of dark skin. And with them, he was the father of many children. And then he brought home a very evil woman. Her name was Mama, M-A-A-M-A-H. Known as evil, Mama. She taught him how to take your enemies and have a ritual murder. And now you have a ritual murder, you not only finish it by killing him, you finish it by eating him. And they call this uh, cannibal. They named it after the, the, one of the uh, individual's family members, Canaan. And they then added to the end the, the negative uh, entity called Baal, Can cannibal. So this was one of the teachings. She also taught him how to really sacrifice children. Of course, when you bring a person like this in to a more religiously understood situation, there's got to be problems. And I imagine that Shem really let it be known that this was evil and this was not right. Now, Ham's son was named Cush, and he received from this situation the same spiritual power that his father had. Then his son was a man named Nimrod. Now, Nimrod received not only the hatred of this woman, but he received, he, he, he took from his father this spiritual power. He was, as the masters have said, he was a fallen angel who had tremendous power. He was the one who created Babylon. And in Babylon, they had sex orgies, they had all kinds of killings, uh, they would put it out in public, almost like the early Christians went through meeting the lions and the lions and, and all the people around was cheering. So they had this kind of an orgy. They killed them. The, 
they, they had a hatred for the, the light skin people. He was the initiator of such racial and uh, 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 hatred, such racial hatred. He, he was also the initiator of sacrificing, sacrificing one's children. So many aspects of what we see today was initiated by this man who became king. Babylon, he created Babylon. And the Bible has a lot to say about how he created Babylon. But he was also the one who mastered or conquered Israel and took them as slaves unto himself because most of the Jewish people were light-skinned and he hated light-skinned people. In fact, he hated them so much that they would have public burnings of light-skinned people. We even see some of this in the Near East today because this whole situation took place in the area that I ran and that, that whole area in the Near East. And so we see some of this even unto today. He was the one who initiated um, the, the worship of Satan, Satanism, which has gone down to, in America, we have over five million worshipers of Satan. Now, he was a fallen angel. A fallen angel, a lot of them are really good looking people. They're, they're very tall and slender, many of them. And he was the one who initiated all of this kind of thing. So this was all before the power, I mean, the Tower of Babel. And all of these sins, all of this stuff was going not only in his nation, but it was spreading. And so at the Tower of Babel, this was the final big push for him. He wanted to make a tower so high that all the world would know that he was the king of the world. And so he got his people together. They picked a spot. They were going to build a new city. And they started building this, this huge, huge tower. This is when God stepped in. This man had created so much negative thrust that it was time to pull a stop to it. And so the Bible says God came down and took a look and said, this is no more. And he changed the language of the people so they could no longer follow his direction, his rebellion as a fallen angel. This was all rebellion against God who cast him out of heaven. <clears throat> the reason that he finally was stopped was because his, his, his great uncle um, Shem finally decided he had gone too far. And he captured him. He cut off his head. He cut his body into many pieces and sent them to his many priests of, of the temples uh, to Satan in Babylon. And he said in the message, if you don't stop this evil, this is what's going to happen to you. Now, instead of stopping it, they went underground. And it's been, it's been all these years, these secret societies, these secret places where they go through all these 
kinds of things like sacrificing a child. There are thousands upon thousands of children in this hour in caves waiting to be used both sexually and, and sacrificially. If we, I heard a, an interview just last week of a person who's really working to open this up and to get rid of all this stuff. And he said, you can't even imagine what some of these child, children are going through. Going back to Nimrod. Nimrod, who actually started all of this. And what is the Tower of Babel? But an empty, empty uh, remembrance of this very, very bad situation. This today is Palm Sunday. Jesus marched into Jerusalem. He upset the tables of the money changers. He was attacking this very, very essence of rebellion to Almighty God by the fallen ones. Let us remember this as we think of the Tower of Babel and what was behind all of this that we see in the present war that we are involved in at this very moment. God bless the reading and the story behind this, this situation. From thy fragrant center light, through thy petals blazing bright, comes God's love intensely pure, rose of light's love will endure. Rose of light, my power flows, fiery, silent, majestic, Oh
thy fragrant center light through thy petals blazing bright comes God's love intensely pure rose of light God will endure rose of light my power flows fiery silent majestic O oh God, flood over the souls of men the wonder of thy love. O oh God, flood over the souls of men the wonders of thy love. O oh God, flood over the souls of men the wonders of thy love. I call forth our beloved rose of light, O oh blessed one, come for the visitation of the heart. Come close to our hearts and closer. Press your heart against our own. Place upon our heart chakra the thought form and the manifestation of the rows of light's unfolding petals. Brilliant, luminous, golden pink petals multiplying the twelve of the heart. Transforming the heart chakra into a thousand petaled rows of love's own flame. Let this power of love create in us a fiery burning heart pressing out love, love that transmutes this day all forces of anti-love. In eternal gratitude, we accept it done, and it is done. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters of light, I greet you today in love, the topic of our study as we do celebrate in this hour the mystery of love and love's own inner defense. Love is the fulfilling of every law of God. Love is the undoing of every counter law of the false harky of death and hell. Love makes the ocean boil like a pot. Love grinds the mountains down to sand. Love spit, splits the heavens into a hundred pieces. Love shakes the earth with a mighty shaking. Love is the empowerment you seek. Love is the power, the great power of the universe. Love is the key and the fulfilling of the whole law of thy being. And through love, all things will be established. Today I call you to the practice of love, for love is the dividing of the way twixt the human and the divine. After all, is it not written that God is love and that we should love one another because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Let us commune this day in love. Let us learn the art of living in love. Let love pour forth from your heart to every part of life, no matter how it is received no matter what is delivered to you in return. In a dictation given through Mark L. Prophet in 1963, Dwal Kul told the story, pulling the curtain back about the mystery and the practice of love. He said, I begin with a tale of the land of the dikes. I am come tonight to bring you the fresh winds of the Zuder Zee, where there lived by the sea a gentle soul who was a miller. He and his wife served together to grind the grain for the people of their town. And it came to pass that in all the land, there were no communities where so much happiness reigned as there. Their countrymen marveled and wondered, for they recognized that something unusual must have happened to make the members of this community so singularly wise and happy. And all the townsfolk themselves were born, grew up, 
matured to adulthood and passed from the screen of life within this community, never in all of their living were they able to understand the mystery. Tonight, I shall draw aside the curtain and tell you what made the people of this community so happy and prosperous, so joyous and wise. It was the service of the miller and his wife and the love which they put into the flower. For this love was carried home in sacks of flour on the backs of those who patronized their mill and was then baked into their bread. At every meal, the regenerative power of love from the miller and his wife was radiated around the table and it entered their physical bodies as they partook of the bread. Thus, like radioactive power, the energy of this vibrant love from the miller and his wife was spread throughout the community. The neighbors did not know the reason for their happiness and none of the people were ever able to discover it. For sometimes, although they live side by side, mankind are unable to pry the most simple secrets about one another. Let us then step into the spiral of love and the love ray. The journey through the many frequencies of God's love encompasses many shades of the pink ray. It is the color of growing compassion, tenderness, kindness, charity, creativity, and a gentle nature with a love for all humanity. And when the heart is full of love, it produces within the aura a billowing cloud of pink energy that can be transferred to others. Starting at the beginning of the spectrum of love's frequencies, we see the most delicate shade, the color of the softest petal pink, almost white, which is many times found in the aura of the very young. This frequency is what bestows the sensitivity of the heart of a newborn babe. In those who have a momentum of adoration and gratitude, we might find much deeper hues of pink chiffon due to the consciousness of intense adoration of the eternal flame and adoration of God's love. The pink color of the aura may grow deeper and deeper, passing from a pink chiffon to the deeper frequency of rose, which is the manifestation of deep devotion to the will of God. This rose color filling the aura may be temporary. For example, you may vibrate with the deep rose frequency when you are in deep meditation or bhakti to God. And it may revert back when you are out in the world again. Some may have more permanent color of rose in their aura if they have long developed the momentum of this virtue. Examples being saints such as Saint John of the Cross or Saint Therese of Lazur. Now, of course, there are other paths of development. For example, in a person who is not truly evil, but whose consciousness develops perverted qualities of the third ray, whose consciousness resides in human conditional love and selflessness or sensuality, animal magnetism or human desire, then these perversions of godly attributes accumulate in the electronic belt and would show up as shades of fire engine red or orange or orange in the heart or in the aura. But our journey through love's frequencies does not end here. In fact, the mystery becomes even more mysterious from this point on. Listen to what our beloved Regent Mother of the Flame, now ascended, has explained about true love. She says, In the bliss of God I am Clara Louise. Know that there is no true divine love without pain. For pain is what true divine love flushes out. Fear not to touch upon and to experience ancient and recent pains. And let them pass. Let them pass into the flame, into the river Ganges, into the heart of the saints, and back to God. Yes, beloved, let there no longer be the suppression let there no longer be the placing of the wall around yourself to insulate yourself from pain. 
pain approaches the edge of bliss, then dissolves into it. This is the knowing of true love. I wish you with all of my heart and my prayers the fulfilling of the mystery of love in this life. The mystery is elusive. It plays hide and seek with you. The more love you carry, beloved, the more it shall cause the hatred to come out in others. You say, how can this be true? And how can this be true love? Well, true love is a purging fire. If you decide, you decide to carry it to such an intensity, you shall become the refiner's fire. Do not hold back your will from entering into this experience, for many are the prisoners of their own hatreds of centuries. They cannot get away from them. They are in bondage. They cannot escape. It requires a surgery of love and the holding of that one until love does consume that wall of hate. If you fear to be bruised and beaten by those to whom you give love, then you are not yet ready to carry the Savior's love. Begin with little loves, for they are seeds planted and they become beautiful, unfolding flowers that grow and grow. You shall be strengthened in the process, and you shall know little by little the gratitude that comes from those who could not have been saved unless you embodied that flaming fire. I am your friend on the path of love. If you call to me, I will give you a recounting of many, many incidents in my life in which I devised the means of self-discipline, whereby I did conserve the sacred fire of love and therefore had the power, mighty indeed, to convey it to others who had nothing at all in their cups of their chakras. Know that it awaits you when you are ready. I believe our beloved Claire Louise is describing how the fires of love can deepen even further, ultimately intensifying to its most powerful and concentrated manifestation, a deep ruby fire. To me, the difference between the pink and rose fires of love and the ruby fire are dramatic. The ruby ray creates a very different vibe or effect in this frequency. The ruby ray is an intense fire, the intensification of divine love, love as the blood of Christ, love as the concentrate, if you will, of the Holy Spirit. It is quite simply the all-consuming power of love. It purges misqualified substance, exercises demons, consumes darkness, hatred, and unreality, confounds evil, dissolves war, judges the fallen ones. And to bear it, beloved, you must be ready. Beloved Shamuel and Charity told us in 1985, in their dictation, the mystery of love, the judgment of the ruby ray, explaining that the judgment of the ruby ray, as it is seen, the judgment of the shedding of the blood of Christ is the most powerful judgment of the Lord God that can be released in this time. You have stood on the rock of the second ray judgments of the Lord Christ and the first ray judgments of Archangel Michael, the very power and the wisdom of the Father descending through the Son. Now, beloved, you understand that for the violators of the third ray, there is a third ray judgment, and this judgment is of the ruby ray. We are the bearers of this judgment, as you have been told, for we did send forth the light, not only for the confounding of Nineveh, but for the confounding of Nimrod and his tower of Babel. And therefore, those who sought to raise the power of the Almighty and to use it as their own inheritance had turned back upon them their lust after the blood of Christ. For it is the light of Christ, the light of Alpha in the Omega body of the Lord that does indeed demand the judgment of the ruby ray. So the ruby ray does go forth. It does penetrate deep into the psyche and the very core of the hate and hate creation harbored against the mother and the messengers and the heir 
of the Lord of the vineyard. This is why it is our desiring to be here in this hour for the ruby ray judgment to now penetrate into the tribes of the earth, into the nations that are angry and into the dark ones that have assailed the light. Therefore they shall not pass. Therefore they shall not stand. Therefore the ruby ray has come as the Lord Shiva, the destroyer in the earth of those who destroy the earth and they are self-consumed, therefore, by their own destructivity. Let them give accounting in this hour. Let them tremble before the Lord God, for the rubri has gone forth from this heart, from the heart of the sun, and they are bound. And therefore, their initiation of the ruby ray is the judgment, even as the initiation of the ruby ray of the light bearers is for the raising up of the seed of Sanakumara unto the path of the ascension. End of quote. It was the piercing light of the ruby ray which did topple the Tower of Babel, built by Nimrod to the glory of Nimrod. It was an intense action of love that confounded the language of those who sought to build this monument to Mammon. And it was this action of the ruby ray that scattered them abroad across the face of the earth. Think about what is happening here for a moment. These fallen angels who have perverted their consciousness in heinous ways for millennia through the misqualification of the light of the Divine Mother as anti-love, as hatred, express in their auras the permanent colors of dark brown or black. If you could see at inner levels their chakras and their auras, it is though looking into an abyss and therefore they're likened unto dark stars wandering stars to whom is reserved the mists of blackness forever. And they wander about the earth seeking to devour those who yet keep the flame God gave them. For when the ruby ray does go forth, it confounds individuals, causing a scattering of the energies of the people by their own anger against the light or their own dishonesty or wickedness. Thus they receive, returned unto themselves tenfold the judgment of their evil words and works. So we can see that the ruby ray is the essential element of love, because unless love had the built-in self-defense of its own self-preservation, the fallen ones would have long ago swallowed it up, but it was not to be, and it could not be, and it cannot. Or you see the ruby ray itself is the essential element of love whereby all anti-love is hatred is turned upon itself and self consumed. So while the ruby ray judgment of the dark ones, so while the, ru the ruby ray is the judgment of the dark ones, it is also the path home to God for us as Christed ones. Those who walk the path of the ruby ray live a life of surrender, sacrifice, selflessness, and service for the purpose of fulfilling the light of divine love within their hearts, as well as on behalf of the evolutions of light on earth. And as we walk the path of the ruby ray, love's two-edged sword cleaves asunder the light from the darkness in our beings. This is the all-consuming power of love that is the dividing of the way between the real and the unreal within you, your restoration to love's original premise. So while the aura of a fallen angel may be total darkness and blackness, we as light bearers may have tiny grains of blackness within the subconscious, within our auras and our four lower bodies. These grains of blackness, as tiny as they might be, drain great amounts of our energy and light, the life force we need, for our constructive use and service each day. By divine love, you can be purged of this. Beloved Durga told us, in the twinkling of the eye of God, you can know the dissolution of the fire of the ruby ray, which is the all power of the love of God, of any condition of consciousness, want or lack, ignorance or the poison's five. All of this can go instantaneously. 
Elohim Eros and Amora explained, know that your call for the ruby ray judgment assists you in balancing as only the ruby ray can balance the misuses of the light of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, this is what the ruby ray is and is for, the balancing of the karma made through the misuse of the light of the Holy Ghost. Samuel and Charity have told us there is no power greater than the ruby ray, for it is actually and symbolically the blood of Christ. And the blood of Christ is charged directly from the Godhead with the very source of life itself. And life consumes anti-life, that is death. So with the power and knowledge of the ruby ray, we can challenge the adversary within and without fearlessly in the defense of the unity of life. This is indeed the initiation that must proceed as requirement, the alchemical marriage, the wedding of your soul to Christ, the goal of love's mystical union. Remember, God or his host of light does not destroy or act in any manner that is anti-love or anti-light. Light consumes darkness as love consumes all that is anti-love. Those who send out hatred or any other force of anti-love bring upon themselves the judgment of the archangel of love, the ruby ray judgment. And this was the point of our scriptural lesson earlier. We heard how Nimrod's dark ambition as well as those gathered with him, was to control the world. So they were confounded and scattered across the earth by the reaction of their own wickedness and anger against the light as they stood in the presence of Chamuel and Charity and the release of the ruby ray from the archangel's great causal bodies. Nimrod is identified in our teachings as a rebel angel, as an embodied fallen angel. Unfortunately, rebel angels in high places are a fact of life on planet Earth. They have been here ever since they lost the war in heaven, and Archangel Michael and his legions cast them out into the Earth. They have put in place their Canaanite culture to enslave us, and they move amongst us wearing physical bodies that are often larger than those of average humans. These same Nephilim keep re-embodying lifetime after lifetime with their desire to build their tower of power by stealing the light of the Divine Mother. Such are their ambitions in every age, these very same ones. We were meant to use the ruby ray in this age to knock out these fallen ones from their citadels of power they have created, where they continually manipulate and control the people of Earth many times from behind the scenes, invisible as it were from the world stage. However, these fallen ones are terrified of the ruby ray and of those who wield it and of the ruby sword, our beloved Buddha of the ruby ray told us in 1988. He exhorted us to come into harmony with the sacred fire, to surround oneself with the fire of creation, to enter the ruby ray judgment calls as you have been requested to do. Beloved, it is also to secure oneself in the bastions of a rock-like substance solidified as an armor of God, translucent, impervious, ruby ray. So we can encase ourselves in a ruby ray armor that it's impervious to everything. Our beloved Buddha the ruby ray was sent long ago by Sana Kumara and Gautama Buddha to abide in the secret chamber of God in the heart of the earth. So even while his divine love and mastery was so needed here on earth, he could not remain as his very presence exacerbated the festering anger of man against man. So he was confined to hold the nucleus of a planet until we, the light bearers, should arrive at the place of a similar, similar love for the ruby ray. Divine love can be very difficult, a very difficult thing for people to handle. And the action of the ruby ray is so powerful that if you have unresolved anger, self-hatred, division among your members and or other psychological issues, its action upon your force field can bring to the surface 
these unconscious issues. This is why few on earth can stand in the aura of a ruby ray adept without waves of their own human substance exploding up from the depths of their unconscious. We must become aware of the force of anti-love that we carry around with us. We must study our psychology and we must resolve the momentums that have worked against ourselves in ages past. And we must, re we must without fail daily, invoke the violet flame to soften the fires of the ruby ray that we have invoked. On June 26, 1995, the alien Eros and Amora planted bricks of the ruby ray in the underworld of death and hell. They said, we have chosen this day to restabilize the planet, not only with ruby ray bricks, but also with rods and cones made up of ruby ray crystals. The forces of light who serve on the ruby ray will serve as lodestones of the ruby ray. They will channel the ruby ray into the canyons of the dense earth itself, using the energy admitted from these bricks to curtail the activity of fallen angels. When you give your calls to the Buddha of the ruby ray and the angels who serve under him, they will anchor the momentum of your ruby ray decrees in the ruby ray bricks. Now we strategically place thousands of bricks throughout the earth, layering them as we embed them in the earth. Our angels will repair the faults in the etheric sheet sheath and as you intensify your violet flame rituals they will repair the faults in the earth and you shall see the curtailment of the power of those who have persecuted the body of god and earth ratify this prophecy by your calls and it shall swiftly come to pass please take out the ruby ray decree posted in your bulletin as we put into practice what we have just learned from the Ruby Ray Adepts. That was posted in the bulletin. And we're gonna give this a few times. We'll start off slowly and then we can see as we learn how to control it, we can try to speed it up a little bit. Together. In the name I am that I am, Elohim, Saint Germain, Portia, Guru Ma, Lanello, Padma, Sambhava, Kuan Yin, and the five Dhyani Buddhas. In the name I am that I am, Sana, Kumara, Gautama, Buddha, Lord, Maitreya, Jesus Christ, Om, Vai, Roshanak, Shobhya, Ratna, Sambhava, Amitabha, Moga, Siddhi, Vajra, Sattva, Om. In the name of my mighty I am presence and holy Christ self, the four cosmic forces, the lion, the calf, the man, and the flying eagle. In the name of the lamb incarnate and the lamb's wife, I call forth the ruby ray from the heart of Lord Sanakumara, Gautama Buddha, Lord Maitreya, Jesus, Guruma and Lanello, Lord Shiva, Durga, great Lord Mahachohan, beloved Paul the Venetian, Archangel Chamuel and Charity, Eros and Amora, Elohim of love, the Buddha of the ruby ray and his angels of fiery intensity from out the great central sun. Beloved Dwal Kul, Lady Masters Nada and Venus, Rose of Light and Clara Louise, the pure heart of Saint Therese of Lazur and the sacred hearts of the saints in matter and spirit. By the light of the universal lineage of the ruby ray, let the sacred fire descend. Let the ruby ray descend and let it now go into the cause and core of all evil upon the planetary body and the way of evil and evil incarnate and every subterfuge of evil into the cause and core of every opposition to our youth. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. All arrows love I now command. All arrows love I now command. All arrows love I now command. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Thy freeing power I now demand. Thy freeing power I now demand. Freeing power I now demand. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Spell all fear and doubt and hate. 
Ruby Ray, power from the heart of God. Ruby Ray, power from the heart of God. Ruby Ray, power from the heart of God. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Ruby Ray, power from the heart of God. Ruby Ray, power from the heart of God. Ruby Ray, power from the heart of God. All Chamuel's light, I now expand. All Chamuel's light, I now expand. Chamuel's light, I now expand. Blaze thy judgment now, in God's name I bow, I am thy radiant light, ruby flame so bright, grateful for thy ray, sent to earth today, fill our planet through and through until there's only you. Ruby ray power from the heart of God, ruby ray power from the heart of God, ruby ray power from the heart of God, all arrows love I now command, all arrows love I now command. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Thy freeing power I now demand. Thy freeing power I now demand. Freeing power I now demand. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. All Chamuel's light I now expand. All Chamuel's light I now expand. Chamuel's light I now expand. Plays thy judgment now, in God's name I bow, I am thy radiant light, ruby flame so bright, grateful for thy ray, sent to earth today, fill our planet through and through until there is only you. Ruby ray power from the heart of God, ruby ray power from the heart of God, ruby ray power from the heart of God, all arrows love I now command, all arrows love I now command, arrows love I now command. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Thy freeing power I now demand. Thy freeing power I now demand. Freeing power I now demand. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Dispel all doubt. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. All Chamuel's light I now expand. All Chamuel's light I now expand. Chamuel's light I now expand. Blaze thy judgment now. In God's name I bow. I am thy radiant light. Ruby flame so bright. Grateful for thy ray. Sent to earth today. Fill our planet through and through until there's only you. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. All arrows love I now command. All arrows love I now command. All arrows love I now command. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Thy freeing power I now demand. Freeing power I now demand. Thy freeing power I now demand. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Dispel all fear and doubt and hate. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Sweep the earth and cut all free. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Ruby ray power from the heart of God. Oh, Chamuel's light, I now expand. Chamuel's light, I now expand. Oh, Chamuel's light, I now expand. Blaze thy judgment now. In God's name I bow. I am thy radiant light. Ruby flame so bright. Grateful for thy ray. Sent to earth today. Fill our planet through and through until there's only you. I live, move, and have my being within a glorious, victorious focus of the all-consuming ruby lightning of divine love from the heart of God and the great central sun. Focus to the five Dhyani Buddhas and the Buddha of the ruby ray. My very own beloved individualized I am present. Beloved mighty Elohim, Eros and Amora, and beloved Archangel Chemuel and Charity, whose mighty light rays surround my form and adorn me with God's omnipotence, omniscience, and his omnipresent love, which seals me and all mankind in the light of God that always prevails. Beloved I am, beloved I am, beloved I am.
So as I've been working with this over the last few weeks, I found it to be very powerful. In fact, some days I give it a little too much and you can really feel a disruption in the force field, but we should all start out with it gently and work our way up, I believe. So anyway, um, let, me, let me continue. The binding of the fallen angels and their removal from the planet inevitably produces changes in the earth. For you cannot extract so great a darkness from the planet without affecting far-reaching alchemical change. You, must, you may pray that the changes be not physical changes. Nevertheless, they may very well be physical. Give your violet flame decrees daily so that the equilibrium of this planet and the people might be restored and use the crees and songs to draw down the intensity of the white light to quickly fill the void created by the ruby ray, lest it be filled again with darkness and other dark ones. As you continue your ruby ray calls for the binding and the judgment of the fallen angels whose time is up, and you continue to go after the dwellers on the threshold of the fallen angels whose time is not up, you will notice a perceptible diminishing of the darkness in the earth and a corresponding increase of light. O oh, beloved Buddha of the Rubire, come forth, come forth, for we your devotees in adoration for thy presence ask for your blessing. We ask for your assistance. As we know, we must come to that place where, where we vibrate with pure love. Rubire love for God. A love so great where we stand that the force of anti-love cannot cross the threshold of our temples. Show us how to succumb to a new vibratory pattern and to the understanding that only through divine love will we make it all the way to our true self. So bless us, great master of the fires of the ruby ray. Nurture within us your gift of ruby fire, for we desire that you live on the surface of the earth in the hearts of true devotees of the Buddha. Om in the light of Buddha. Now pause for a moment, center yourself in your heart, visualize the Buddha of the Ubre seated in the secret chamber of your heart. Focus your attention on the fires of the heart and the love that God has placed there as the earth is saturated in ruby fire of this Buddha of divine love. Buddha of the ruby ray, come forth. Buddha of the ruby ray, come forth. Buddha of the ruby ray, come forth. It is done.